Hi everybody, this is Steve again on the Guru Brew. You know, I've had my Raspberry Pi now for a couple weeks. Well, actually I've had it for about a month. But uh, when I originally hooked it up, I had a little dilemma. I did not have an HDMI port on any of my monitors that are currently in my shop here. So I needed a way to convert the signal. And if you had looked at my Raspberry Pi video, I'll put a link up here if you want to look at that. I had to go out and buy uh, this adapter. This adapter is a DVI to HDMI and it was about $17 and I picked it up locally at a, uh, a discount store. So it wasn't real cheap but that's the way I had to go. Now I, I must say um, going to HDMI has been quite nice and the Raspberry Pi running videos in 720p looks really good um, before I purchased this I went on eBay and I looked for solutions to this problem and I found a um, an HDMI input to a VGA adapter output uh, converter and they call it a converter for a PC laptop and it was on Amazon so I went ahead and purchased it. I knew it would take a while, so that's why I bought this other adapter because I wanted to play with my Raspberry Pi sooner. But it did come from China, and I finally got the package in today. And here is the package in from China. It came from a place called L.I. Pong. P-U-H-O-N-G and it came from China Post and it, t it took uh, about three weeks to get here so I figured I would open this up and take a look at it and see how my HDMI adapter to VGA works and what the quality is on it and I will tell you that I did buy it on Amazon and it came with free shipping even though it took three weeks to get here, but I only paid about eight dollars for it. So um, the savings is significant over the other adapter here, but um, let's let's open it up. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and make sure it works. Now, I did read the comments in, on Amazon before I bought it, and other Raspberry Pi users did say it worked. So uh, we'll just see, and I'll do a review at the same time. So let's get started. Okay, we're back here. I've got my table set up with everything I'm going to show you on it. I did open up the uh, top of it, but I never really pulled it out and took a good look at it, so we'll do that now. Here's the actual listing. I printed it out from Amazon. And um, like I said, I paid um, $7.92 for it, and it's listed as a black HDMI input to VGA adapter converter for a PC laptop and you can see it right there and like I said uh, there was a bunch of reviews on this and there was several mentions of the Raspberry Pi in the reviews with stars that they liked it so I'm assuming it worked well with a VGA monitor and that's what we're going to find out here in just a few minutes it did come from Hong Kong it took about three weeks to get here and uh, it, it only cost me $8 though, so that's the real kicker. All right, on to the opening. So, you know, it does have some kind of a converter um, circuit inside this black box I'm pretty sure it would have to to go from you know HDMI to VGA so um, let's open it up here and see what we have The risk is not real great because it, it was only $8, but uh, 
you know, if, if something's wrong with this, you're going to have a tough time trying to get a replacement from Hong Kong. So there is a little risk there, but sometimes the reward can be better. So there it is. Um, it's a fairly nice unit. There's a cover on the the input for the DMI. HDMI, I should say. Let's see if we can get the cover off here. So that'll fit right in the Raspberry Pi itself. Let me get my Raspberry Pi here. Let's not assume anything. Let's just make sure that this will fit in here. So it does. It fits right on the Raspberry Pi. And then what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a cable, a VGA cable that goes from here to the monitor. And you can see it has a couple female screw holes here. So there is some sort of a circuit inside here that converts this HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi to straight VGA. So the next thing to do is hook it up to a VGA monitor and maybe bring up a video and take a look at the quality and see how it looks. By the way, you're probably seeing this board on my Raspberry Pi. This is a test board that we've been working on and we're going to bring um, some of this up in the next couple shows about Raspberry Pi um, input output playing around with our little circuit board. That'll be on another show though. So, uh, okay, give me a few minutes and I will get a VGA monitor and we'll hook this up and see how this adapter works. And to compare quality from the HDMI adapter that I had on here before watching videos, I'm going to use the same Dell monitor. It has VGA input as well and I found this uh, VGA cord. So I am going to hook this VGA cord up to this adapter here and run it into this monitor. So give me a minute and I'll get that hooked up. Okay, well, we hooked this new device up for the VGA output to this Raspberry Pi. And um, all we had was a black screen. The monitor, which is here, was responding with the lights but there was no output to the screen so um, in its current state it's not working um, we took this adapter over to a television and plugged it in with a, a computer to try that and it worked fine so we think this box from Hong Kong is fine so I got on um, the Amazon website and there was one comment, a review from uh, another user and I will go to that um, review and show it to you next and we'll try their suggestion. So hang on a second. Okay, so I've, I've taken the SD card out of the Raspberry Pi and I'm attempting to change the config.txt file on the actual Raspberry Pi SD card. I put it in a Windows machine and this is the directory here um, and there's the config file there and you can open it up in any text file editor. I will open it up in Notepad++ and let me show you the comment real quick um, that I found on Amazon.com and it is a review from the actual product when I purchased it online and it was written by S. Chen and I'll try to remember to put a link in the description so you can um, find the product yourself as well as re read the comment. He says that you should open up the Raspberry Pi config.txt file and then um, change about three or four different uh, items in there so um, here's the actual message that he wrote here you can look that up yourself but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so um, I'm back here in notepad plus plus the first thing that he says to do is to go, um, 
uncomment the HDMI force hot plug to equal one. So you want to look down through here and find out um, where the hot plug is equal to one, and it's here. And if you notice, that line, that particular line, has a pound sign in front of it. And the pound sign means that it's commented. So when it's commented, just like in PHP, it's not active. If you take the pound sign out, it becomes active. You can think of the pound sign as um, making the line not work. So if you want it to work, remove the pound sign. So line 21 here, yours might be a little different, but I'm going to remove the pound sign so that it reads HDMI force hot plug equal one. That's the first thing that you have to do. Um, the second thing you have to do is look down through here and find HDMI group to equal two. Well, here's the HDMI group to equal one and it is commented, so I have to take the pound sign off. And I have to change the one here to a two, so I'm gonna do that now. The next item is the HDMI mode to equal 16, and here it is here. I'm going to remove the pound sign, and mine says 1. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 16. And there's one last item, and it's right here. It's HDMI drive equal 1, or he wants it to read HDMI drive equal 2, and mine says equal to 1, and mine is also commented. I'm going to remove the comment, change the 1 to a 2. That should be it for the changes in the config.txt file on the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So what we want to do is we want to come under file here and make sure that we save it off. And then we're going to take our card back over to our Raspberry Pi and check it. Now I did want to bring your attention real quick. Um, he made a comment here that these settings that I just made are uh, good for a set resolution of 1024 by 768 at 60 Hertz so that would be common for uh, you know most monitors would work just fine on those settings if you want to change your resolution for a different type of monitor then you know the numbers may vary but to get you started just go ahead and use these settings okay I'll meet you back over we're gonna put this card back in the pie and see what happens we'll be back well, indeed, our Raspberry Pi is booting and it looks great. So that was the answer. You have to change the configuration file if you use one of these VGA from HDMI adapters. I'll, I'll be sure I put the link on the, uh, the comment section so you can follow it through. So there it is. There's the adapter there. You can see where it's going to a regular VGA card and then it goes into the HDMI port. Let's wait for the uh, Stardex to come up here so we can get an idea of the colors. This little board here we'll talk about more later. We haven't said anything about it yet, but uh, that's a little surprise coming up for you. So you can see we're interfacing there. Well, here it comes. There's the Stardex. There's the GUI for the Raspberry Pi. Now the resolution's a little bit higher than what we had had on the HDMI side, but uh, we can just go inside the configuration file and change that again so that we can uh, make the screen size uh, what we would like, so that's not a big deal. Okay guys, if you like this video, give, give us a thumbs up. If you buy the HDMI to VGA adapter, make sure you make these changes. Um, thank you very much for watching and have yourself a good one. See you later. I thought I would give you a preview of my case that I've been designing in SolidWorks to house my Raspberry Pi. I've had such good luck using acrylic in my last few experiments, projects, that I've decided to go ahead and use it to build a Raspberry Pi case too. Um, out of clear acrylic so I will show you what I have in mind so far this is not ready to cut yet but it is an idea so if you see this rendering and, and have any ideas that I could make it better certainly let me know 
I just plan on doing two uprights to get it off the um, get it off the uh, table or work surface, and uh, you know have a uh, a suitable base that everything can sit on, and then uh, poke the the parts out the side panels, and then on the other two side panels where um, this connector and these two and this one just leave them open I could make covers for those but uh, I really don't think it needs it I kind of like the openness of it if I was to do this in a setting that wasn't for an experimenter I would probably put the sides on there but since it's going to be me and I'm going to be plugging stuff in and out of it I'm just going to leave the side covers out of it I've opened up this area on the top right here so I could you know stick a ribbon cable down on this header pin for the GPIO and uh, this way too your memory card will stick out the side so this is just one little idea I had to cut a, an acrylic box and when I um, do that I will put the plans up for anybody that might want to use them as well you might need a you know CNC machine or something like that to make it with but if you have one or you can get access to it you, you know I'll share my file with you so um, I just wanted to show you that okay hey guys this is Steve thanks for watching hey don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment see ya